In this video, I'm going to talk about the recommended routes across Vietnam. I'm going to go from Ho Chi Minh all the way up to Hanoi and cover a little bit of the north. Obviously, I'm going to plow through this pretty quickly. For more information, we have routes all over our website uh, and the maps that you can download as well. Also, if you do rent a motorbike from us, we give you a paper map where one of our nice staff will run you through uh, where we recommend to go. So let's get started. Ho Chi Minh to Hanoi on Google Maps is around 48 hours. In real life, that's not what it is. You do not want to come here to drive the highway. If you're doing the good and fun roads, it takes 10 days driving. Driving all day, every day, about eight hours a day. So if you have a 10 day holiday, Ho Chi Minh to Hanoi, you're going to be on the bike all 10 days. If you've got 11 days, that's 10 days on the bike with one rest day. 15 days, 10 days on a bike, five rest days. So a normal traveler will take 20 to 25 days to go between Ho Chi Minh and Hanoi. That's 10 days on the bike with 10 to 15 days of rest days to do your tourist activities. The north above Hanoi, that's a further three weeks. One week for the northeast, one week for Hai Yang, and one week for the northwest. If you combine them all together, it takes less time because that one week that I'm talking about is including getting to the north and getting back. Okay, so really if you want to do the whole country, including one area of the north, like Haiyang, you need 25 to 30 days. So let's get started. You will also notice what I'm going to talk about here is a little bit different to most backpacker blogs or places like Vietnam Coracle. And the reason for that is I'm a motorbike guy. I go out there, it's part of my job to do every single road, A, B, C, D, and E, within one section and I will decide which road I think is the best. Whereas most bloggers will just do Vietnam once and they'll just say that's the best route. Right, so first of all, Ho Chi Minh going north. That's the way we're gonna run this thing. I'm gonna get out my pointing stick here. What we recommend is Ho Chi Minh down here to a place called Katian out here. So you're going inland already. Reason for that, it's the easiest and quietest way out of the city. Right, then from Katyn to Dalat, you've got a nice mountain road. Good stuff. Dalat's a great place for canyoning tours, hiking tours, all of that sort of stuff. Now, from Dalat, we want to go to Natrang. Now, you can either go down to the coast, Mui Ne, very popular tourist area, through Phan Ran round to Natrang. Now, the best coast in the entire country is Phan Ran to Natrang. This is awesome. Second best is Mui Ne through to Phan Ran. So you can come down this way or you can come across this way. There's also a nice mountain route, Dalat to Natran going this way, but there's plenty of mountains later. So this is your chance to do the best coast in the country. Where a lot of travelers go wrong following backpacker blogs is they go straight to the coast, extremely busy. The road is not actually on the coastline. Uh, it's just not the right way to go. Go inland first, coast later. Right, so now we're in the party town of Natran. You've got a couple of choices here. If you go inland, you get better driving, but it's incredibly remote. There's no hotel infrastructure out there. For a lot of people, it's out of their comfort zone. So for us these days, most people go Nha Trang to Quinh Yong up the coast. There's a nice mountain pass on there too. Now what you have to realize in Vietnam, if you're on the coast, you're on the highway. The highway is busy. It's not actually good for driving. So the saying I have is Vietnam is famous for its coastline, but it should be famous for its mountains especially if you're on a motorbike. If you're on the coast, you're kind of in the wrong place. But anyway, Nha Trang through to Queen Yong. Do the coast here for most people. Queen Yong is a nice sort of authentic local city, let's call it that. Uh, lots of seafood, that kind of thing. People tend to like it. Now, from Queen Yong, you want to be coming inland to an area, Pleiku or Mang Den. Now, this is really remote, awesome, uh, open, fast-paced sort of mountain roads but there's not many hotels. So you need to take this section of, of the country pretty seriously if you choose to do it. No mechanics, that kind of thing. But yeah, Nha Trang inland to basically here Pleiku, Kontum, but the place we recommend is called Mang Den. It's not actually on this map. Then from Kontum, you're coming still inland. Now you go connect up to Hoi An and Da Nang on the coastline. Now the maps we have, you need to download because those roads are still not on Google Maps. That's how new and remote they are. What happens, the government built a nice highway through the middle of the country, straight down the middle, and for some reason, no one uses it. So we use it. <laughs> That's the way it should be. Now, Hoi An and Da Nang. Hoi An's a very popular tourist town. People make suits there from a Top Gear show. Uh, Vietnam Top Gear Special 2008, that's why I'm in this country. 
loads of tourist activities, food tours and all that stuff in Hoi An. Da Nang is a big city. Now, this is a difficult area to recommend what to do because the Ho Chi Minh Road, in my eyes, goes from basically inland Hoi An through to Phong Nha, up here. This is the best road in the country for your average tourist. It's just awesome. The Ho Chi Minh Road. But you also have the High Van Pass connecting to Hue, which is the most famous road in the country. Top Gear, uh, the show, if you want to download it, Vietnam Top Gear Special, they made the High Van Pass famous. They sit on top of the hill and comment about how beautiful Vietnam is. However, it's very overrated. The reason it's so popular is A, that show, and B, it's connecting to tourist town, Hoi An and Hue, with a relatively short drive, making it accessible to a lot of tourists to do. The better road is to come straight inland to the Ho Chi Minh Road, and you're gonna go up to a place called uh, Khe San here. That's your day one, and then Khe San through to Phong Nha. It looks short on the map, but it's a massive drive, but a good one. If you're doing the touristy stuff, you go Hoi An to Hue. Hue's a nice city, got a citadel, a lot of culture there. Do the Hai Van Pass. And then Hue, you come inland up to Khe San and then Khe San to Phong Nha. That's your more casual way, let's put it that way. Right, but where people go wrong on the Ho Chi Minh Road is they underestimate how long it takes. There's a lot of twisty mountain turns. People run out of time, they're going up it and they bail out onto the coast. Big mistake because the road gets better and better and better and better as the hours go by if you're going south to north. So you run out of time, end up on the coast, you're now on a highway, big mistake. Right, so now we're in Phong Nha. This is where all the caves are in Vietnam. Really underrated area of this country still. If you are an adventure tourist, check out Ox Ales. All of their caves are on the site. They rank them in difficulty. They're not cheap, but they're done properly. This is where tourism, adventure tourism is being done well in Vietnam. Sign up to a two or three day caving based hike. Well worth it. If you don't have that sort of budget, then there are a bunch of caves around Paradise Cave, Phong Nha Cave, Dark Cave. You can have a good experience driving around a bit, checking out the caves yourself. Absolutely love Phong Nha. Okay, so now you've got a couple of choices. Phong Nha to Hanoi is unfortunately a bit of a two-day slog. There is no good way to do it. It's very flat, uh, pretty busy, boring sort of terrain. Uh, if you're going to Nimbin here, then really you're just on a highway to Nimbin and then a highway Nimbin to Hanoi. So Nimbin's a very popular tourist area, but you have to realize the driving to get there and then to Hanoi is, is not great stuff. What we recommend is going around all of that nonsense, uh, keeping sort of on the Lao border, and we go up to a place called Mai Chao or Pulong, somewhere out here. It's not on this map, but basically you're going around all of the traffic and then from Mai Chao and Pulong, there it is, Mai Chao to Pulong is on this map. Into Hanoi is the best way into that big city. Mai Chao and Pulong are small tourist areas, especially in rice paddy season, October-ish, very, very beautiful. But you don't have all of the tourist uh, things to do like in Ninbin. Um, so you have to kind of choose what you want to do. Now, talking about the north, I need a longer poking stick. For most people, you want to begin with Haiyang. It's the most famous area of the north. Uh, what's so great about it is the roads are actually good. You've got good quality tarmac along twisting mountain terrain. Uh, but it's also very beautiful. These days, the tourist infrastructure up there is also pretty good. Basically, a Haiyang loop is around one week of driving. The northeast is where you should go as number two. If you have time, you've got Banyok Waterfall out on the Chinese border, which is absolutely spectacular. Whereas it's way up there, you can see it in the top north corner, out of my reach. And then you're going to come around back to Hanoi. So basically, Haiyang, northeast, you're going to be going, uh, which direction is that? Clockwise, right? Because if you run out of time, you just do Haiyang. Great stuff. If you've got extra time, you do Haiyang and the northeast, right? So what about the northwest? Well, the northwest is actually the most beautiful area of Vietnam, but the roads are terrible. So you're going from nice, sort of open, good tarmac roads to uh, roads of potholes, gravel, that kind of thing. It's pretty difficult to drive in some ways. It takes a lot of concentration. Tourist infrastructure is very limited. The homestays and things out there don't know how to process 
uh, tourists in a lot of areas. So you do that if you're a serious adventure traveler in the Northwest. But for most people, honestly, it's out of their comfort zone. You go to places like ET above Sapa, woo, very beautiful, but a nightmare to get there, really. And what about Sapa? Where is Sapa? Somewhere up there. There it is, you can see it. Now, the problem with Sapa is it's super touristy, super, super touristy. And to get from Haiyang to Sapa is basically an entire day of rubbish driving. So if you want to see Sapa, you've got Haiyang to Sapa, one day of bad driving, and Sapa back to Hanoi, one day of bad driving. So you've got two days just to see this touristy area. In my eyes, it is not worth going to Sapa unless you're going to commit all the way to a proper northwest loop. Sapa is just not worth going to. Uh, it's such a big mistake for people to uh, try and find their way there. There's much better places to see in this country. How about trains? So in the old days, trains were very easy to use to skip out areas of the country. But these days, the, basically, the bikes don't go with you, so it's not so easy. The train uh, Hanoi to uh, Lao Cai, which is a Sapa area, again, is just logistically difficult to arrange. If you do want to go to Haiyang, uh, our Hanoi team these days can arrange a, the bike to be there for you using a truck. And then you take a, a bus or whatever it is you want to the Haiyang area. Okay, so we've covered the whole country except for the Mekong Delta. What about this? So the Mekong Delta is very hot, flat, and busy. From a cultural standpoint, to see sort of how Vietnam runs, uh, it's very interesting, and food and all that sort of stuff, floating markets. From a motorbiking standpoint, this is not good driving. It's very hot, flat, and extremely busy. There's just no decent way to recommend for a tourist to drive. Having said that, there are routes in here, sort of meandering around along um, sort of narrow rivers and things, um, but you need a tour guide to do that. So the Mekong Delta is for tours, motorbike tours, or if you want to do a bus tour there, you can do that too to see the floating markets. And that goes for Phu Quoc as well. So Ho Chi Minh to Phu Quoc really is a full day drive and a full day drive back, and not a pleasant one at that. So if you're going to go to Phu Quoc, you should be flying. These days, there are better islands around than Phu Quoc anyway. Probably fly to Kondao or somewhere like that. There's always new islands popping up around the south. Keep an eye out for them. Don't necessarily just land yourself in the hot spot of Phu Quoc. Very touristy area these days. So uh, to sum this up, people are not spending enough time in Phong Nha. They're not taking the Ho Chi Minh Road seriously enough. And too many people still do not understand that some of the best driving in the country is between the Trang and the Nang. They all follow the backpacker blogs going completely the wrong way up the coast. That's my summary of where to drive in Vietnam. I hope that was helpful. Any questions? All right. Let's... Okay. <clears throat> so if you don't have a full 20 to 30 days to travel this country, unfortunately for you, you got to choose which section to drive. And that's a really hard decision. Basically in the south, it's always hot. So whatever, whether it's rainy season or not, you've got you know, nice hot temperatures, you've got some coast, you've got some mountains. So um, for me, it's a very consistent area to drive. You're gonna have a good holiday, but you don't get the jaw dropping beauty of the very north or even the Ho Chi Minh Road. Now basically Vietnam is a country where the more beautiful the area, the more volatile the weather. So you get the wrong season, the wrong conditions, you end up, for example, in the north just driving around in rain clouds. But you get good conditions, well, you've got some beautiful driving and views on your hand. Um, Vietnam does not wrap itself into one nice uh, package of uh, weather. Each area of the country has different uh, seasons. We have a blog article on this that tries to explain it, but it's extremely complicated to get your head around it. That's how complicated the weather patterns are in Vietnam. Maybe use that to decide where you would like to travel depending on your dates. Oliver has just asked me a very complicated question. If I do X, Y, and Z, will I miss out G, H, and Y, okay? <laughs> the answer, in this country, there's just so many different routes, so many different roads, so many different options. You shouldn't be worrying about missing something out. Just plan the holiday the best you can and enjoy what you're doing, okay? So for example, a good one is Ho Chi Minh to Da Nang. This is if you have around 10 days. That takes sort of between four and seven days. So you've got a couple of days spare, what do you do? 
while you do uh, what Vietnam Coracle calls the golden loop, which is you come inland, you do a little bit of the Ho Chi Minh Road, you come back into Hue around over the High Van Pass back to Hoi An. Adds an uh, extra two to three days. Ah, but now you're going to miss out the best road in the country, which is going up to Phong Yan. So be it. You don't have time to do it. Don't worry about it. What you've just done anyway is still awesome. Okay? And actually, this is a pretty, the golden loop is a pretty good way to sort of extend your holiday, um, just to do a nice little loop around the Da Nang Hoi area.